Hello there, my name is Ismos, and today we're going to be texturing this uh, model here, a furniture asset, uh, to get it to look uh, something uh, like this in the reference image. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is a, a furniture asset that I modeled in a speed build uh, that I have uploaded on the YouTube channel. Uh, I, I think I uploaded it a few days ago. Uh, so you're going to see how to texture it uh, to get it to look uh, like in the reference image. Uh, if you want to get the asset here, so that you can follow along i would encourage you to become a patreon uh, that way you have access to the to any models that i have made and uh, also help me continue making uh, these awesome tutorials and uh, you can just go to patreon.com forward slash forward slash top channel one on one uh, or i'll be leaving a link in the description so so that if you want to download or check out uh, or support me in any way you can just uh, do that I like that. I always upload a few models now and then at my Patreon page uh, so that any of my Patreon can have access to them. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get started on uh, texturing this asset. So the first thing we're going to do, you will need to do is unwrap, UV unwrap uh, the entire thing. Uh, so you can see that, uh, let me first hide this light. Maybe you can see that uh, uh, these assets here are separate. Uh, are separate. But uh, if we select everything, go to edit mode, and go to UV editing, you can see that uh, they are all sharing the same UV map. So you can see this here would be there. So all the assets are sharing all the elements of the object that make up the object are sharing the same UV map. And uh, this here and this are the same. Uh, this here is just an instance of this object. So they're using the same UVs. And uh, any changes that I make here, I, li I replicated this, this side. Uh, the reason I want to do this uh, like this because I want to bake uh, the final textures onto one image map. And uh, so that all these material, these objects will share the same material as uh, that way it's easier to work with and uh, even uh, to share with other people uh, instead of having different materials for every asset here, every element here, uh, they can just have uh, the same material. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, see how to proceed with this. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is bake out uh, the ambient occlusion and the height map or uh, not, uh, the sharpness or edges of uh, this object uh, of this object uh, so that we have a map for that and that will help us in the texturing of the object uh, so let's create a new material also make sure that uh, your UVs are known to, uh, are known to, uh, on top of each other or an, are not overlapping say say what I mean is that uh, they're not on top of each other like that but uh, there is some bleed or margin between all the different UV islands like that and the way you can achieve that is uh, if you have your UVs are selected like this you can go under UV and then pack islands and uh, set a margin here you can see it will uh, give you some distance between the different islands uh, I'm happy with my UVs so I won't make any changes and just to be sure that I didn't make any changes let me reopen the project let me save another I think I have already a copy so yeah let's uh, bake out uh, the ambient occlusion and the height map or I'll just call it the height map uh, because it's easier for me to remind to remember that way so uh, I'll create a new material let me go to material shading uh, for to bake any materials you need to uh, to be to work in cycles because as of now uh, if it doesn't have a bake option so just go under cycles uh, se select uh, the object you can just select one object like this and then add a new material uh, let's call this yeah I think it's called a cavity map yeah cavity cavity and uh, to add a to to create a cavity map what you want to do is go under 
you, let me turn on my shoot, shortcuts here. Go under, go under input, geometry, and the toggle through are the different nodes here until you find, until you go to the point na pointness uh, output. And uh, the way you do that is uh, by using the shortcut control shift and then click on the node. It will go from the first and then click again until you, re you arrive at the point nest node. And uh, to make this shortcut work, you need to have the node Wrangler add-on enabled. So just go under preferences and uh, under add-ons, search for node Wrangler. Uh, make sure that that is uh, turned on uh, so that you have access to that, uh, to those shortcuts. So we need to preview uh, this point nest. We need to be in the sharpness, sorry, in the ren in render mode. And you can see that uh, we can see, we can see the, cav the cavities and the bumps of this object. And uh, what these are going to help us is that if, we, if we go to the image editor, uh, this uh, cavity map will let us uh, add uh, these worn out edges. As you can see them there yeah so to add to add those uh, details uh, that you see in there so i want this to be applied for every other object so i'll first uh, go back to this maybe let me give it a color so that it's easier to see and uh, let me hide uh, the camera and the light I'll select everything and then select uh, this as the last object and then use the shortcut ctrl l to get this option and link our materials uh, to select it so now we have all the elements are sharing the same uh, material so now we can preview our cavity map go back to rendered mode also make sure that you are in cycles if you will not preview uh, the pointness uh, output so make sure you are in cycles and you can see this is what we have right now so we need it to be more pronounced so i can add a convert car ramp uh, this will give us control over uh, the contrast of our map but uh, it will not make it as pronounced as we as we want it to so for that we are going to use a convert math node and change the operation let me move this here change the operation to power and uh, when you increase the value here, you can see how uh, that becomes more pronounced. Now you can control the contrast with this. if we leave it at one I think this is also enough so after you're done you can now make sure you feed this into a diffuse shader uh, because we want to bake this as a diffuse uh, sh using the diffuse shader uh, if you try using the principal shader uh, for some reason the principal shader doesn't uh, bake uh, the diffuse map and uh, it's what we have uh, for baking the color of whatever input input maps we have here. So let's fit this into the color map of the diffuse and then preview this. Then go to the render settings and the bake, change the bake type uh, to diffuse. And now uh, you want we want to only bake the color. We don't want the direct or indi indirect lighting. Uh, if you bake these two, uh, it will it will also be baking the light and shadows uh, that uh, that are being affect that are affecting uh, the object. We only want to bake the color. So, uh, but uh, we need an image uh, to bake uh, that map too. So, go under texture and uh, add an image texture. I'll call this bake. You see why I'm calling it back in, uh, in a minute, and uh, I also want to turn it uh, to to, uh, to have it a 32-bit uh, image uh, to make it more 
smooth within. You'll see what I'm talking about. So let's just click OK. Uh, make sure you have this as selected. Let's see. Make sure everything is OK. And now uh, we can go under UV. You can make sure you also have everything selected. So I'll go to wireframe and select everything there. Go to UV editing. Make sure that uh, my UVs are very well set. Okay. And that I have every object selected. And uh, now I can change uh, to the back image and uh, hit back. So just need to go to the render settings and then hit back. So I'll come back when this is done baking and I'll show you the results.